Healthcare in North America is recognized as being the highest quality in the world. When we enter those hospital doors, we expect the latest in technology, and we expect that technology to be working perfectly. Critical to the operation of every medical facility are properly functioning medical gas systems. These medical gas systems deliver the life-critical pure oxygen, nitrous oxide, medical air, and vacuum that sustain life and allow an anesthesiologist to stabilize vital signs during surgery. Medical gas systems are the heart and lungs of every healthcare facility. The piping industry professionals who design, install, and maintain these systems must be highly qualified in this specialty. And one organization dedicated to maintaining the high standards necessary in these systems is the National Inspection Testing Certification Corporation. This is our simulated nurse's station in our mock hospital. I'm here with Dana Levy. He's a piping industry expert, and he regularly teaches medical gas installation and testing techniques to other piping professionals. In addition, Dana is affiliated with the National Inspection Testing Certification Corporation, or NITC. Dana, exactly what does NITC do? NITC works with various organizations and individuals that maintain, design, install, and inspect medical gas systems. In conjunction with that, we, we specifically try to test and certify to the recognized standards that have to do with the brazing and the piping inside of a hospital. Well, is that something that's established locally or nationally? Exactly who sets those testing standards and guidelines? So those are nationally recognized standards, and the brazers must qualify under these standards. Either the American Welding Society or the American Society of Mechanical Engineers have developed criteria that must be, a must be satisfied by the individual brazers. Now, I understand that in addition to certifying the actual craftspersons who do the work, that you also train inspectors and operators on the best way to make sure the system is operating properly and, in fact, is not contaminated. Yes, it's very important that the installers and the inspectors of these systems understand the criticalness and the importance of the cleanliness inside the entire system from the beginning to the end user. Ultimately, the responsibility of protecting the health and safety of the patients belongs to these people. And I guess that whole system is tied into these gauges. Why don't you tell me a little about them? Yes, that's correct. Here at our nurse's station, we have various alarm systems that are installed. Here we have the master alarms that monitor the condition of the source gas, the reserve gas, and the condition of the gas in the main piping systems. Over here at the actual nurse's station, we have various gauges for the different gases. Here we can see we have oxygen, nitrous oxide, the medical air, the medical vacuum, and nitrogen for running the tools. Okay, well that's a, a lot of background. Let's go see how it's actually accomplished. I wanted to show you the, our testing procedure here, and it has to do with certifying the installers that they know how to do the brazing procedure properly. This whole entire installation from the beginning to the end has to follow nationally recognized standards. The most important of these are the NFPA, which is the National Fire Protection Association, and the ASSE 6000 series, which is the American Society of Sanitary Engineering. There are other various nationally recognized standards that I'll refer to basically through the explanation here that talk about what needs to be done to ensure the integrity of the system so that there's no contamination introduced all the way from the source of the test of the medical gases to the end user who cannot protect themselves. What you're saying is that contamination or the lack of it, perhaps, is really what separates this kind of an installation and what makes it so critical as compared to a normal pipe installation. That is correct. What we're trying to do is maintain the integrity of the pipe as it comes from the factory and maintain that cleanliness throughout. Okay. What are the necessary steps for installation? There are several things we need to go through to have to put together so we can make a test here. This would be similar to what happens on the job site. The pipe comes from the factory already cleaned and capped. It's called ASTM BA19. That's the number that the cleanliness must qualify to. And that's a standard that means that the pipe has been cleaned and certified from the factory that it meets medical gas standards. The fittings also, of which this is a coupling, also must come cleaned and bagged in a plastic bag so that they also can maintain the cleanliness. Uh, I noticed that the inside of the pipe is kind of rough. How do you remove the burrs and still avoid contamination? On the inside of the pipe, when the cut has been accomplished, there's generally a ridge or a burr that's left on the inside of the pipe. To remove that, to return the pipe to its original inside diameter as it comes from the factory, we use a tool called a deburring tool. 
What a deburring tool does is we run it around the inside of the pipe, it removes the excess copper down to the original size, and it leaves it kind of in a ring type of a situation, rather than the, the old way it used to be done is with a reamer, and a reamer would leave chips or flakes inside sure. the pipe that is also a source of contamination we're trying to eliminate. Okay, Dana, what's the next step? When we put the two pieces together in our test situation here, we put them together as such. And during a test process, we need to have two coupons, one of which will be done in a horizontal position and one of which will be done in a vertical position. And in the vertical position, which we will show you later on, you have to do two up feeds. The horizontal is done in the way that it sits here presently. Now, let me clarify. A coupon is just used for testing purposes. Is that correct? That's correct. A coupon is used for testing purposes only. When we've completely brazed this coupon, it's sent off to the testing lab, and the lab will certify that the person that actually made the installation of the braze in this place, in this instance, it was accomplished the process according to the standard. We have a 100% filled joint. Before we start the braze on a test coupon in a horizontal position, we must mark the top of the pipe. And this is accomplished by use of a file or some other identification so that we can always refer to the top of the coupon because we have to cut a half-inch strip out of the side, and we need to know from the coupon where the top was, so it's cut out of the proper side. Okay. And you have nitrogen flowing into the coupon right now. That's correct. The nitrogen must be oil-free dry nitrogen going through the coupon during the brazing process, and it's supplied from a flow meter. Mm -hmm. Our purge enters this end of the coupon through our test jig here, flows through the pipe, and comes out a little small hole that's been drilled into the cap end over here. What a nitrogen purge does is it eliminates the oxygen on the inside of the piping. Oxygen is normal all around us in our normal atmosphere. It's approximately 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen that we breathe normally. But what the oxygen will do during the brazing process, because it gets so hot between 1300 and 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, that the copper oxides will form on the inside of the pipe. So what we do during our process is try to eliminate the oxygen from inside of the pipe so that the cleanliness that we got from the factory will be maintained throughout the brazing process. And as soon as you're finished with the braze, then you can disconnect the nitrogen, right? After a certain point, the nitrogen purge must run through the coupon, or in, in the hospital situation, must run through the piping until the joint has cooled to the touch. Okay, until it's completely cooled. Cool. That's okay, correct. Great. You cannot turn off the nitrogen purge until the whole entire joint has cooled. If you're doing several joints along the pipeline, you must keep the nitrogen purge running until the whole entire pipe has cooled down to a natural temperature. Okay, Dana, now what's the next step? Now that we have a nitrogen purge, we would take an oxygen analyzer in a hospital situation, but in this case, it's not necessary because we just have a short run here. You would use an oxygen analyzer to be sure that you've eliminated all the oxygen, and the oxygen analyzer would need to go down to zero. And that would indicate that there is no oxygen remaining inside the pipe and it's safe to braze the pipe. Would that also confirm that, that, that the seal is complete? If there was any oxygen that, would, that could indicate that it hasn't been purged, it could also indicate that there's a seal that hasn't that's, sealed. That's is that correct. Right? The piping all must be capped mm -hmm. and it needs to have electrical tape or vinyl tape on the outside of the plastic caps put on mm -hmm. each one of the offsets from the original piping so that oxygen cannot be aspirated or reintroduced into the pipe when we're doing sure. our nitrogen purge. Okay. After we're sure that we have a nitrogen purge flowing properly, we will turn it down so there's just a small positive pressure on the inside because we don't want the purge to actually push or keep the that filler alloy that we're going to put inside from penetrating the joint 100%. We just want a small flow through there, be assuring us that there is no oxygen entering the system. But before we actually start brazing, I'm sure there are some safety considerations. That is correct. Safety considerations have to do with you must wear substantial work boots. Mm -hmm. You must have used cotton gloves and not leather gloves, of which organic material from the leather may contaminate the joint. And also, we must wear safety glasses with side shields. Okay. I've got my safety glasses. Let's begin. Okay. During this brazement that I'm going to make here, I'm going to use what's called a rosebud tip, which has a whole bunch of small fires coming out or flames coming out into this tip. There are various other tips that could be used depending on the size and the nature and the position of the joint you're going to be using. Some places, like up in a ceiling or an overhead of a hospital, you may want to use different types of tips, and I'll explain that. Any heat source is acceptable when doing the medical gas brazing, as long as excessive oxidation, melting of the base metal, or unmelted filler rod are not produced at the joint being brazed. There's a proper size tip for every size joint to be braced. 
This is an example of an acetylene air torch that also can be used for medical gas brazing. It uses acetylene for the fuel and it mixes it with the air here in the venturi to make the correct flame tip up here at the torch. This works well on medical gas brazing, but it, it's more forgiving, but it has a potential to take a lot longer time to heat up the joint, and there's also a potential to have not 100% penetration because of the temperature differences. This is a C-tip torch made by Smith Equipment. You can see it's an oxygen and acetylene, and it holds the heat in the surrounding area around the joint and doesn't throw a lot of heat around to the surrounding area. It works real well in confined spaces and tight areas where you don't want to damage the surrounding area. Another feature they have are these Kevlar coated hoses that should you lay them across the hot pipe or some other hot surfaces, it won't burn or damage the, the hoses coming from the sources of the gases. This is another oxygen acetylene torch with the dual tip. This also works real well in a confined space or tight area where you want to be able to control where the heat is put on the joint. I wanted to explain to you a little bit about the two different types of joints that we're going to make on our coupons, one of which will be horizontal. This is in the horizontal position, and the horizontal position, when you've accomplished two joints on the horizontal position, it qualifies you for horizontal joints and down feed, which is downhill. The vertical joint of which I will make two joints have to have two up feed joints, and on the up feed joints it qualifies you for doing uphill or up feed joints and horizontal. So that covers all the positions of which you may find yourself brazing the pipe in a medical gas installation. When we light the torch, we want to start with the acetylene and then add the oxygen to it until we get the correct flame so that we have a, a nice blue flame with a little bit of feather on it so we can evenly distribute the heat around the joint without melting the copper. Okay, and you were talking about temperatures in excess of 1,000 degrees there. That's correct. The different filler alloys we have will melt between 1,300 and 1,800 degrees. And so we have to be sure and get it hot enough to melt the alloy, allow it to flow in the joint, but not to melt the base metal or the okay. copper. As you can see, we'll give it just a little bit of a feather. That's where it would be brilliant. We'll give it just a little bit of a feather off of being brilliant so the heat isn't quite concentrated on each one of those little tips coming out of there. And then we'll start heating the joint. On a horizontal joint, we want to heat it all the way around until it gets cherry red. And when we start actually brazing the joint, we want it to start at the bottom and work our way up on both sides. Keeping the heat moving is the key so it doesn't get too hot in one place. We always take our heat from the tubing to the coupling or to the fitting so that we're sure that the pipe on the inside of the fitting is just as hot as the outside so we can assure ourselves of having a completely brazed joint. So you said you're looking for that to get cherry red. That's correct. That's what will happen when it's approximately the right temperature. It'll get real red. See, we're approaching that now. We always have to keep our heat moving so that the whole entire joint is hot. And then we will touch the filler alloy to it. We don't want the heat to melt the filler alloy of the, directly of the flame. We want the heat of the joint to melt it. We keep it moving kind of in a circular pattern. And we'll come and do the other side. Remembering to keep our heat moving all the time. And on medical gas, we want to be sure that there's at least a full joint on the outside. So we run a small cap on the outside of the joint to be sure the joint is entirely filled. Then we move over and do the other side the same way. Heat naturally rises, so that's why we're starting at the bottom and working our way towards the top. The reason that the filler alloy will fall, flow all the way inside of our joint is because of capillary action. 